folks. I hope you enjoyed your holy days. An old friend of mine gave me this book for Christmas. Thanks, John. It's Bono's new autobiography. For those of you who are unaware, I performed with you 2 for four and a half months, which earned me no less than two sentences in this 557-page book of fiction. That's it, Bono. The gloves are coming off. You publish falsehoods about me for the whole world to read. I'm going Taylor Swift on your ass. down, shall we? Mr. Bono starts out here by saying, we'd met a belly dancer in Bush Gardens in Florida. That's I such a lie. <gasps> such eloquence. But it ain't true. They did not find me at Bush Gardens. I wasn't even working there at the time. Let's continue. <clears throat> A week before we opened the indoor version of the tour, we talked this woman, this woman, who also danced with snakes, into joining us. Okay, they did not talk me into joining them, and they didn't meet me a week before the tour, and I guess he just forgot my name. And yes, I danced with snakes after the tour, later on. So where'd you get that little nugget, Bono? You just decided to slip that in there? Spice up your story a little bit? So y'all wanna know what really happened? Well, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I, Christina, the astonishing, well, I didn't call myself astonishing yet. But I was growing into my astonishingness. And I, the young Christina, approached YouTube's production manager, John Kennedy. Outside of the Lakeland Civic Center, where they were rehearsing for their upcoming Zoo TV tour, I gave my business card to John Kennedy. And I asked, do you think the band might be interested in having a belly dancer perform during mysterious ways? He thought on this for a moment, and then he asked if I would be willing to surprise the band during their dress rehearsal two days hence. He thought this would be just the thing to lighten the mood during the stressful weeks leading up to a worldwide tour. Of course, I accepted. And history was made! So the day of the dress rehearsal, I arrived good and early, like the professional that I am. And I was laying low while they were doing their sound check. And I was scoping out the venue, trying not to get noticed. And when the time came for the full dress rehearsal, that was my moment to shine. Well, obviously they were astonished because they invited me to dance on the opening night of the tour. Grievously, at the last minute, they decided there were already too many elements to worry about in the show. Ergo, they decided to forego adding a belly dancer. Well, obviously, afterwards, they realized that it was a mistake, that the show would have been way cooler if they had just let me dance. Because a couple of days later, Bono called me from Miami, asking if I could fly down to Miami that same day. So yeah. I tossed my costume in a bag and I headed my grungy bones to the airport. Of course, my performance was astonishing. And the next morning, before I headed off to the airport, I passed the edge, by the edge, of the swimming pool. And I said unto him, May the wind be always at your back. And I turned my back and departed. And all that was left was but a memory of my grungy flannel 
as they slipped off through the hibiscus flowers and the birds of paradise. Well, clearly the show was lacking a certain je ne sais quoi, because a week or two later, Bono calls me again and asks if I can fly up to Boston to perform on St. Patty's Day, which I guess is a big deal if you're Irish. And after another predictably astonishing performance, there amidst the festive sounds of bagpipes and intoxicated Bostonians, the most celebrated Irish band in the history of the world asks the young Christina of Tampa, Florida to join the Zoo TV Tour. Now wasn't that a lot more interesting than we talked this woman into joining us? Oh no, you really need to learn how to tell a story. Honestly, how is this guy rich and famous and I'm not? So most people probably assumed that having a live belly dancer perform during mysterious ways was one of the original concepts for the tour. But no, that happened because of me. It was I who manifested that magical element that has become an iconic, unforgettable moment of the tour. But Bono here couldn't even acknowledge me my name. I'm just this woman. Some random woman. Good job, Bono. Moving on. I must say, this next part is the only accurate part in my little segment of his story. I wouldn't even call it a story. It's more like an account. She proved a wonderful moment in the show. I agree. But, admirably, in retrospect, hold that thought, she left the tour. Where Don't to lie. You? Really? Really, Bono? Did I really leave the tour? Or did you guys just hire the girl that was trying to get my job the whole time I was on tour with you guys? Yes. Oh, excuse me. Well, let me tell you a story. left 
the tour complaining about our use of plastics backstage. Complaining? Excuse me, Bono. I was not complaining. Let me tell you a story. sunny June day in Stockholm, Sweden. And after we arrived at the Globe venue, I decided to go out for a stroll. So there I was, walking along the plaza. Lo and behold, what do I see? But a huge recycle bin. Alas, there was no recycling on this tour. So there I was, little Christina, the hippie grunge eco-terrorist and I go running back to the venue and I knock on the dressing room door and I'm like hey there's your recycle bin outside do you guys have any recyclables you want me to take over there and their tour manager Make a difference. <laughs> well, I think that was a turning point in the development of my character. I tried to do something. It's a whole lot different than complaining. So you best get your story straight, Bono, before you go publishing falsehoods about a person to the whole entire world. And don't think that you can mitigate your slander by putting the word admirably in front of a statement that ain't stinking true. So he finishes off by saying that I was opining that they weren't being idealistic enough. You made that whole thing up. What makes you think you know what I was opining, Bono? You know what I was opining? I was opining that your tour manager was a <laughs> Now he goes on and talks about this Orly May gal and how she wasn't the obvious choice for a belly dancer. Well, no kidding, Bono. She ain't had a lick of training. I mean, you can't just throw a cheap old costume made of Mardi Gras beads on a person and call them a belly dancer. Well, I guess you can, because you did. Sometimes everything just feels completely pointless. Belly dancing is an art. goes on to talk about her chemistry with the band and how she started out with him and ended up with the Edge, a real funky member. Life was to imitate art. Kind of like the girl you hired to imitate a belly dancer. Guys, this book is real cringy. You could read it if you want to. It's your life. You get to pick what your life has time and room for. Personally, I ain't got no time to read fiction. I got a farm to run, I got a banjo to restring, and I got life to live. Just remember, don't believe everything you read, and don't believe anything you see on the TV. Like that guy William from way back when used to say, all the world's a stage. You can either sit back and watch the or you could be the star in your own story. After all, storytelling is an art. And life shouldn't imitate art. Life should be.